Now we are going to study the amplification of the gene of interest. Basically, this results in selective amplification of a specific region of a DNA molecule. And so it can be used to generate a DNA fragment for cloning. This technique, which we are now going to study, is called as the PCR or the polymerase chain reaction. And it was invented by Carrie Millis in 1985. Children, the basic principle underlying this technique is that when a double-stranded DNA molecule, as you can see in the diagram here, when the double-stranded DNA molecule is going to be heated to a high temperature, the two strands will separate out due to denaturation and they will give rise to single-stranded DNA molecules. If these single-stranded molecules act as a DNA template and are copied by a DNA polymerase, then it would obviously lead to duplication of the original DNA molecule. And if these events are repeated many times, multiple copies of the original DNA sequence can be generated. So, here you can see if you heat it, you are going to have opening of the two DNA strands and each strand will act as a template and would lead to the development of the further two strands. So, from one strand of DNA, we have been able to get two strands. This is the basic principle. Now, what are the requirements for this technique? This requires the DNA template. Like I said, we can use one or more target DNA which needs to be amplified. Besides that, it needs primers. Now, what are primers? They are oligonucleotides, 10 to 18 nucleotide long. The two primers, as you can see here in the diagram children, these are the two primers and these are made to hybridize to each DNA strand and they are oriented with their end facing each other, allowing the synthesis of DNA towards one another. Besides that, thirdly, we need a special DNA polymerase enzyme which is stable at a high temperature greater than 90 degrees. And this enzyme, children, is TAC polymerase. This has been isolated from the hot spring bacterium Thermus aquaticus. So these are the requirements. Now, let's come to the working mechanism. Children, a single PCR amplification cycle basically needs three steps. And what are these three steps? First is denaturation, second is annealing, and third is extension. Now, first, what is denaturation? In this children, the target DNA is heated to a high temperature, about 94 degrees centigrade, leading to the separation of the two strands. Now, each single strand will act like a template. As you can see in the diagram here, the two strands have separated. And this is the first step, that is denaturation. After this, we have annealing. In annealing, you can see easily two oligonucleotide primers. They are found, they are annealed or hybridized to each of the single stranded DNA which functions like the template. Now you can see the sequence of the primers is complementary to three prime end of the template DNA. You must ensure that the sequence of the primers is complementary, the sequence of the nucleotides of the primers is complementary to three prime end of the template DNA. This children is done at a lower temperature of about 55 degrees centigrade. Now, the third is the extension and that is the using the enzyme TAC polymerase. Here children, the synthesis of the DNA will occur 
starting from the primers and using the deoxynucleoside triphosphate as well as magnesium ions. This process occurs at a temperature of about 72 degrees. And so you can see here in the diagram here, you have the primer and it is going to extend from the 5 prime end to the 3 prime end. It will continue and finally extension occurs on both the strand. Similarly, on this strand here, upper one, you will again see that this primer is going to extend again from the 5 prime to the 3 prime end. Here, we will have more of the nucleotides added and the extension gradually occurs in the two opposite sides. So, to begin the second cycle, children, again, we will have to heat the DNA again so that the two strands will again separate out and each single stranded will again act like a template. We will again use a primer and the primer, like I said, must be against the three prime end of the template. And once the primer has annealed, the last step is extension which will require the use of the deoxynucleoside triphosphate as well as magnesium ion. In this way, children, we have been able to copy the DNA, specially segment which is lying between the two primers. Hence, if we have n number of cycles, then the number of DNA molecules obtained will be 2 to the power of n. Children, the PCR is more effective than gene cloning. So if we compare the two, that is the PCR and gene cloning, then we find that PCR is more efficient, it is less costly, the error probability is less, and also the time taken for a typical experiment is comparatively much less. So by means of this PCR, we can produce in vitro multiple copies of the gene of interest. The next step in recombinant DNA technology would basically involve the insertion of the recombinant DNA into the host. I have already told you that is first we have to make the host competent and also we must be able to distinguish between the transformants and the non-transformants. Non you already know that transformants are those into which the recombinant DNA is inserted, whereas non-transformants will not have. So how you distinguish between the two? For this, we can identify any selectable marker gene. Suppose we are considering ampicillin resistant gene as a selectable marker. So children, if the recombinant has the ampicillin resistant gene as a marker in the transformant and if now we place on agar plates with ampicillin then obviously the transformants with the resistant gene will survive the non-transformants which do not have the ampicillin resistant gene when they are placed on the agar plates these are going to die because